When hearing the world royal family, the first people that come to most people's minds are the British. And for good reason. They have managed to become some of the most liked and hated public figures, and their constant and seemingly never-ending drama since the mid-80s has given the public all of the material to become obsessed with them. However, there is another royal family that is battling them for the title of messiest royal family, and that is the Spanish royal house. Much like all the other European royal families, the Spanish have a long history that goes over millennia, but I want us to focus more on their recent history. Also, I'm going to be mostly focusing on their interpersonal drama and not so much on their history, so if you want to learn actual Spanish history, this video is not the place. Now with all that being said, let's get into the video. I'm going to start with Alfonso XIII of Spain. I'm not going to talk too much about him, this is just context for the rest of the video. Alfonso was born on May 17th, 1886 and he was declared king five days after being born because his father, Alfonso XII, died suddenly on November 25th, 1885. So the president, Praxedes Mateo Sagasta, had to wait until his mom gave birth to declare a successor because he had a sister, and during that time, until this day, Spain has a system of male preference, meaning a woman can inherit the throne, but a younger brother will take precedence over any elder sisters. Obviously, he wasn't allowed to actually rule the country until he was considered an adult in 1902, and during this time, his mother, Maria Cristina of Habsburg Lorena, was the one to actually do the things that the monarch was supposed to do. On May 31st, 1906, Alfonso married Queen Victoria's granddaughter, Victoria Eugenie of Battenberg. When they went back to Spain, they suffered an attempt on their lives with a bomb that was on a flower bouquet that was thrown at them by an anti-monarchist. And after this, Alfonso continued to see opposition towards him, mainly due to problems relating to Morocco. During the first half of the 20th century, things were so bad that he started to think about supporting a dictatorship. He was advised that the lesser of the two evils would be a military dictatorship, and on September 13, 1923, the general captain Miguel Primo de Rivera gave a coup supported by the king. However, by 1930, Alfonso had gotten rid of the dictator and wanted to go back to a constitutional state. But people were tired of him, so there were more and more anti-monarchist uprisings in the country until February 1931, when Alfonso named Juan Bautista Aznar president, and he called for a general election on April 12th where the anti-monarchist won and by April 14th, the Second Spanish Republic had been established. He lived in a few hotels before settling down in Paris and then eventually in Rome, where he tried to convince Mussolini to help him re-establish the monarchy after the civil war broke in Spain. And with his help, he was able to return to the country where he remained in the revolted territory, which was the Francisco Franco side. Those two had known each other for a long time. Alfonso gave Franco a medal of honor and was the godfather at his wedding. But by 1937, the girls were fighting and Franco told Alfonso that there was no chance that he would ever sit on that throne again. Alfonso ended up dying on February 18, 1941 in Rome of chest pain. Alfonso had five legitimate children. According to Google, he had 13 kids total, but obviously only the legitimate ones count, two of which were girls, and the other three were Alfonso of Bourbon and Battenberg, born in 1907, Jamie of Bourbon and Battenberg, born in 1908, and Juan of Bourbon and Battenberg, born in 1913. Alfonso Jr. was supposed to take over the throne as the firstborn, but he was born with hemophilia, which is a disease in which blood does not clot properly. This made him very weak all of his life, and he wasn't able to do all of the things that he would have to do as the heir to the throne. On top of that, after the family was exiled, he fell in love with a Cuban woman that wasn't a member of royalty, so his dad told him that he had to give up his position. After him came his brother Jamie, who had become deaf at age 4, and also was asked by Alfonso to give up his position in the succession, as he didn't think that his disability would allow him to be a good ruler which left us with Juan as heir of the throne. Juan of Bourbon and Battenberg was the third son of King Alfonso, born in 1913. In 1936, he tried to go back to Spain with his father, but he was intercepted and forced to go back to exile, after which he sent a letter of apology to Franco. After the war ended, he sent another letter congratulating him, and Franco responded by praising his attempts at joining the army. In 1941, he tried to convince Germany to help him reestablish the monarchy, but they turned him down, and by the end of 1942, he started to publicly show interest on the throne and distance himself from Franco's government. In November of that year, he released what is now called the Geneva Manifesto, 
which was like an interview that he gave to a newspaper where he says that the monarchy would be reestablished and that under his rule all Spaniards would be able to coexist. In 1943, Juan sent a letter to his supporters in Spain asking them what they thought would be the best way to get rid of Franco. Franco got a hold of this letter and sent the ambassador of Spain in Sweden to talk to Juan about it. Juan's response was that he was annoyed at the lack of action on Franco's part to reinstate the monarchy. In 1945, he released the Lausanne Manifesto, where he asked Franco to step down and allow the reinstallation of the monarchy because he believed that this was the only way to achieve peace in the country, given that the Allies had won the war. The manifesto was suppressed in Spain, but was published by the BBC. Juan also asked the people who worked in the government to quit if they supported him, but only two people did it. And after that, Franco swore that while he was alive, there would be no monarchy in Spain. Two years later, in 1947, Franco passed the law of succession in the head of state where he states that he can choose anyone, anywhere, and for any reason to be the heir to the throne so that he and his party could keep control of the monarchy. Juan, of course, rejected the law on the Estoril Manifesto and said that the only person who could inherit the throne was him and his family. All of this drama made the idea of the monarchy even less popular in the country, so Juan had to change strategies. He decided to meet up with Franco, and they made an agreement that Juan's son, Juan Carlos, would be educated in Spain under Franco's guardianship, and throughout the 50s, Juan continued to try and get Franco to reinstate the monarchy. In 1956, a tragedy that we will talk about a little bit later led to Juan's brother Jamie trying to reclaim the throne and demand an investigation into the tragedy. The following year, Juan aligned himself with a traditional conservative movement called Carlistas or Traditional Communion, who had previously tried to assign a king that was not related to Juan. On July 12, 1969, Franco sent Juan a letter letting him know that he had finally chosen his son Juan Carlos as his heir. On the 23rd, Juan Carlos swore in front of the court of the principles of the national movement and the fundamental law, the legal scaffolding of Francoism. Due to all of this drama, Juan and Juan Carlos didn't spend that much time together and Juan Sr. felt that he had been cheated out of his decision and betrayed by his son, so he refused to abdicate, meaning that Juan Carlos couldn't be recognized as king according to their family tradition. But Franco didn't care about any of that, and he started to give control of the country to Juan Carlos by 1974, and in November of 1975, Juan Carlos was declared king of Spain. Juan Sr. eventually abdicated in 1977. In 1990, he was diagnosed with cancer a disease that caused his death on April 1st, 1993, at the age of 79. Juan and his wife, Maria de las Mercedes of Bourbon and Orleans, had four children together. Maria de Pilar of Bourbon and Bourbon, born in 1936, King Juan Carlos I, born in 1938, Margarita of Bourbon and Bourbon, born in 1939, and Alfonso of Bourbon and Bourbon, born in 1941. Pilar of Bourbon and Bourbon was born on the 30th of July of 1936. She was a nurse. She studied nursery at the Arthur Ravara Higher School of Nursing. She actually worked as a nurse in 1963 when the ceiling of a Portuguese station fell down and she was sent to the Dos Capuchos Hospital to treat patients. Because of this, she ended up receiving a medal from the Portuguese government. Her dad tried to marry her off to Balduino of Belgium. She was sent to Belgium with Fabiola of Mora and Aragon, who was a Spanish aristocrat but the king ended up falling in love and marrying Fabiola. Pilar eventually got married to Luis Gomez Acebo. Her family was originally against the marriage because they thought that she should have married someone with royal blood and he only had a noble title. They met at the house of the last king of Bulgaria who was married to Luis's cousin and they got married on May 5th, 1967 in Portugal. Because of this marriage, Pilar and her children lost their position in the line of succession. Pilar was mentioned on the Panama Papers. If you don't know what those are, those are papers that mention a bunch of high profile people who were opening accounts in Panama in order to avoid paying taxes. Pilar had one of those accounts for 40 years. She started it in August 1974, one month after her brother basically became head of state because Franco was too sick to rule, and it was dissolved five days after her brother abdicated the throne in June 24, 2014. Pilar admitted to having this account, but said that she never avoided paying taxes in Spain. She said that the account was owned by a friend of hers and that her husband decided to take part in it as a way to have projects outside of Spain in order to protect themselves financially from any instability in the country in regards to royalty, which was not something that was uncommon at the time, and that she ended the account because they didn't have any more money and not because her brother abdicated. 
Pilar passed away on January 8th, 2020 in Madrid after having complications with colon cancer. Pilar and her husband had five children. Their firstborn was Simoneta Gomez Acebo, born on October 28th, 1968. She got married in 1990 to the son of the founder of Galerias Preciados, which was a big department store chain in Spain. They had three kids together and got divorced in 2012 after being separated for three years. Then we have Juan Filiberto Nicolas Gomez Acebo and Borbon. He was born on December 6th, 1969. There isn't much information about him other than he had a son in 2013, got married in 2014, and got divorced in 2019. Next, we have Bruno Alejandro Gomez Acebo and Borbon. Again, much is not known about him. He got married in 2002 and has one kid. On the more scandalous side, he was sued in 2016 by his cousin, who is the great-grandson of Francisco Franco, because Bruno has stopped paying his cousin Luis Alfonso the rent for the apartment that he was renting him. The rent was 3,000 euros and he hadn't paid it since 2012, meaning he owned Luis Alfonso 145,000 euros. Bruno countersued his cousin, saying that he had done some renovations in the house with his own money and that because of that he shouldn't have to pay the money back. Luis ended up winning and Bruno was ordered to pay 99,448.41 euros. He was also involved in a different scandal when it was found out that his uncle Juan Carlos had helped him set up a venture capital fund in the United Arab Emirates to invest anywhere from 550 million to 1.1 billion euros to build infrastructure. Next, we have Luis Beltran Alfonso Gomez Acebo and Borbon. He was born on May 20th, 1973. He married the model Laura Ponte Martinez in 2004 and together they have two children. They got separated in 2009 and divorced in 2011. And in 2016, he remarried and had a child with his new wife. Pilar's last child is Fernando Humberto Gomez Acebo and Borbon. He was born on September 30th, 1974. He got married in 2007 and divorced in 2011. In 2016, he suddenly married a Greek woman with whom he had a child a few days later and divorced in 2017. Next, we have Margarita of Bourbon and Bourbon. She was born on March 6, 1939. Margarita was born blind, but she was very good at learning languages and had a strong affinity for music, especially rock and electronic music. She gave up her succession rights after marrying the doctor Carlos Emilio Juan Zurita y Delgado because he was not a member of royalty, so she and her children are out of the line of succession. In 1989, she and her husband created the Dukes of Soria Foundation, which is a non-profit cultural organization. She's also an honorary president of UNICEF Spain and the National Organization of the Spanish Blind, of the Spanish Heart Foundation, and the Spanish Federation of Hemophilia. A hospital was also named after her, and she received an honorary doctorate in 2009. Margarita and her husband had two kids together. The firstborn is Alfonso Carlos Zurita and Borbon, born on August 9th, 1973. Not much is known about him he has a long-lasting girlfriend but he has never been married or had children he's apparently an economist and has written seven books about it their other child is maria sofia emilia carmen surita and borbon who was born on september 16th 1975 she became a single mother in 2018 through artificial insemination she has appeared on the spanish mask singer on spanish master chef and is the head of a multitude of organizations before we talk about King Juan Carlos, let's first talk about his little brother, Alfonso. Alfonso was born on October 3rd, 1941. Remember how I mentioned earlier that there was a tragedy that took place that made their uncle try to reclaim the throne? Well, that tragedy was the passing of Alfonso at the ripe age of 14 years old. So, in March 1956, Alfonso and Juan Carlos were sent to Portugal to spend holiday week with their family. Alfonso was still in high school and Juan Carlos was going to a military school in Zaragoza. On the 29th of March, it was Holy Thursday, it was a normal day. Alfonso went with his family to mass and in the afternoon he was supposed to play in a golf tournament. He was apparently a really big golfer like his dad, something that had brought them together. Alfonso competed and won the semifinals, after which he went back home with his brother and dad. After everybody went back home, Juan Carlos and Alfonso went upstairs and they were playing with a broken gun. It was a small revolver which was supposed to be inoffensive, but while Juan Carlos was holding it, it shot a bullet straight into Alfonso's head. It is said that when Juan Sr. found them, he tried to save Alfonso, but it was too late, so he covered Alfonso's body with a Spanish flag and made his oldest son swear that he didn't do it on purpose. Because remember that Juan Sr and Alfonso were close and Juan Jr. and Sr. were not. The Portuguese press released a statement sent to them by the Spanish embassy in which it was said that Alfonso shot himself while cleaning the revolver because Franco didn't want people to know the truth. But very quickly it came out that Juan Carlos was the one with the gun. Allegedly, Juan Carlos told one of his friends that he pulled the trigger but that he didn't know that he had bullets in it and that the bullet first hit the wall and then his brother. 
According to his mom, they had been forbidden by their dad to play with a gun, but they didn't listen. She too believes that Juan Carlos accidentally shot his brother, and also she was the one who opened the safe where the gun was being kept. Lastly, Pilar said that Juan Carlos was carrying the gun and some snacks for them to eat, and that when he opened the door, he pushed it with his shoulder, the door hit his arm, which made the gun go off. Alfonso was buried on March 31st in Portugal, where he remained for 36 years until 1992 when his father requested that he be brought back to Spain, where his remains currently rest. Now that we've talked about all of Juan's children, let's talk about King Juan Carlos I. Born on January 5th, 1938. As mentioned earlier, his father and Franco made a deal in 1948 that Juan Carlos would be educated in Spain and Franco would become his guardian. So on November 9th of that year, Juan Carlos was sent to Madrid for the first time in his life. He was assigned eight kids that were outstanding either for how smart they were or for their aristocracy bloodline to become his friends and classmates. And through this, they found out that Juan Carlos presented signs of dyslexia and had a hard time keeping focus in class. By the summer of 1949, the relationship between Franco and Juan Sr. had deteriorated a lot. So his father decided that Juan Carlos should stay in Portugal with his family. But by autumn 1950, he was sent back to Spain without telling him. In 1954, Juan Carlos met who would become his future wife, Sofia of Greece. I will talk more about her and their relationship in a minute, but they met in 1954 during a cruise ship that was created with the intention of promoting Greek culture and finding suitable partners for the young princes and princesses of Europe. At this time, she was 15 and he was 16, but nothing happened between them at all because they were both busy dating other people. Sofia was in a relationship with King Harald of Norway while Juan Carlos was dating Maria Gabriela de Savoia. Maria Gabriela de Savoia was the daughter of the last king of Italy, Umberto II and his wife, Maria Jose of Belgium. She and her family were exiled in Portugal, and she was very close to Margarita, which is how she met Juan Carlos. They became really close when they were studying in Switzerland, but he apparently cheated on her with Olgina Nicolis, who was the daughter of an Italian earl. But to him, this was just a fling because he really wanted to marry Maria Gabriela. But she wasn't meant to be because she wanted to be free. She really didn't care about all of the royalty nonsense because she didn't have to. And years later, she even said that the monarchy required too many things from people in it, and if you didn't do it, that you would end up like Lady Diana. So she really didn't want any of this. She wanted to be free and have fun, and that's what she did. Also, Franco didn't like her because of her personality, so Juan Carlos wouldn't have been able to marry her even if he wanted. In 1956, he shoots his brother, accidentally or not, and after all of that happens, after his brother's burial, it is said that his dad got on his car and drove to the coast where he threw away the gun and said, no policeman can examine the weapon, no judge investigate the fact, no coroner examine the corpse. Only Juan Carlos knows what happened in that room. After which, he was promptly sent back to Spain. On June 8, 1961, Juan Carlos meets Sofia once again at a wedding. Let's quickly talk about Sofia. She was born on November 2nd, 1938, to the former king and queen of Greece. She and her family were exiled during the Second World War and lived in Egypt, South Africa, and London throughout it. After the war ended, the monarchy was re-established in Greece and her parents became king and queen in 1947. When the two reunited, they were both single and it seemed that they were the perfect person for each other. This was not a marriage out of love, but out of convenience. So much so that they couldn't really communicate with each other because he couldn't speak English and she couldn't speak any Latin language. Sofia needed to marry a future king and Juan Carlos had to marry someone who was part of a reigning monarchy. Franco liked Sofia and the rest is history. The pair got engaged on September 13th, 1961 and it is alleged that Juan Carlos threw the ring at her and told her to catch it. This marriage was a big drama. First of all, they had to figure out when the wedding was going to take place. Her dad wanted the beginning of 1962, his dad wanted June of 1962, so they compromised and got married in May. Another issue was their religion. She was a Greek Orthodox and he is a Catholic, so they needed to figure out a way to please both publics. What they decided to do was to have two weddings. They talked to the Pope, who agreed to it, and then they talked to the Greek government, who said that they were fine with her giving up her religion, but that the Orthodox wedding had to be bigger than the Catholic wedding, that she was not going to change her religion before her wedding, and that it was not going to be a big publicized event because they weren't going to host an event that saw their princess giving up her religion. Their biggest struggle, though, was how to finance the wedding. Sophia's parents had to ask the government of Greece to give them £50,000 that they would pay back. This was accepted, but one week later, a new government was elected. So the whole thing goes to vote, 
and they end up getting all of the money for the wedding, including the money for the dowry that they had to pay Juan Carlos. Apparently, the only thing that there wasn't a fight over was the place of the wedding, because Juan Senior didn't think that they should marry in Portugal or in Rome. Spain was obviously out of the question, and so they ended up marrying in the only place that they could in Athens. By the mid-60s, Franco had decided that Juan Carlos was going to inherit the throne and that they were going to skip over his dad, something that of course enraged Juan Sr. So he decided to hold a dinner in which Juan Carlos was supposed to say that he would not take the throne over his father. But the days prior to the event, he said that he couldn't attend because he was sick. And he, of course, ended up accepting the title of Prince of Spain. And in July 1969, it became official that Juan Carlos was going to become King of Spain over his father. On November 22nd, 1975, two days after Franco's death, Juan Carlos became Juan Carlos I of Spain. Despite what he had promised, he did not intend of continuing Franco's legacy and wanted a change of government so that the country could become a democracy again. And by 1977, the country was in a state of transition from the previous government rule. I don't want to spend too much time talking about what he did during his time as a monarch politics-wise because that is boring and as I said, we're going to focus on interpersonal drama. So let's get into all of the alleged affairs that this man has had. As mentioned earlier, he and Sofia didn't marry for love. It's said that they even hated each other at some points in their marriage, and in more recent time, barely even speak to each other. So he had a few known affairs. I'm sure he had many others, but these are the ones that we know for sure and the ones that got the most publicity. Before that though, remember the lady Olgina with whom he had a relationship in like the 50s? Well, she ran out of money and she decided to sell the letters that they sent to each other when they were dating for 10 million euros. She contacted the head of a Spanish magazine who then contacted the king who ordered that those letters be bought. But it was too late because somebody else who worked at the magazine had taken them photocopied them and sold them to another magazine. Another one of his affairs was with Barbara Rey. She is a Spanish presenter, showgirl, and actress. They met in the mid-70s thanks to the then president of Spain, Adolfo Suarez, who introduced them to each other at a party and started their affair in the early 80s. They had an affair for 17 years that he put an end to in the late 90s. He first tried to end their relationship in 1994, but because Juan Carlos is messy as fuck, she, of course, had proof of his affair in the way of photos, videos, and audio recordings. So she started to blackmail him. He gave her money until 1996 when the president said that enough is enough and Barbara said that they should just give her a big sum of money and she would forget about everything. So they set up a bunch of accounts to send the money to. Originally, it was rumored that the money came straight from the government, but later it was said that the money came from Juan Carlos's friend and that the government was just setting up the accounts. Their relationship became public knowledge in 1997 when Barbara's house was robbed and they took everything that she had on the king, so she went to the police and told them that her house had been robbed to protect someone high in government. On top of the robberies, it was also said by her that this person had threatened to kill her and her children. She eventually gave an interview in which she said that she wasn't keeping evidence, that everything she had was with the consent of the other person, and that they were just friends. Some of the tapes were eventually revealed during a documentary that came out last year called Save the King on HBO and in them they were calling each other nicknames and planning to meet up. Moving on, we have Marta Gaya. They too met in the 80s at the Mallorca Sea Club. The rumors about this relationship came up thanks to the Spanish media. There were some issues with the government at the time and the president had to change the Minister of External Affairs. But in order to do so, they need the king to sign a document. The problem was that he wasn't in Spain. It was first said that he was in Switzerland, but people started whispering and soon enough, she was on the cover of a magazine titled The Lady of the Rumor. Their relationship went on from the early 90s until 2003. It is said that she was his true love. They were never photographed together because she was very, very careful. Everyone knew about their relationship in their close friend circle, but she never wanted the attention and fame that would come from telling the public about it. The king allegedly said that he had never been happier than when he was with her and gave her 1 million euros in 2011. The last woman we will talk about is Corina Larsen. She is a German businesswoman and she met the king in 2004 while hunting. One month later, the king's right-hand man was jailed for blue-collar crimes and Corina immediately took over his responsibilities. 
She had a diplomatic passport and accompanied the king in all of his travels to meet with government officials and other important members of society. He loved her so much that he was set to divorce Queen Sophia and marry her. They had allegedly already planned everything out for him to divorce and remarry while maintaining the throne, but the former president Felipe González and Felix Sanz Rolda told him that he could have Corina or he could have the throne, but not both. By 2010, they didn't love each other that much, or at least she didn't love him that much anymore, but they thought that he was going to die of cancer, so she decided to stay besides him. Eventually, he found out that he didn't have cancer, but they continued their relationship, and she moved into a house that was situated inside the palace while Queen Sophia was living in London. Their relationship became public knowledge in 2012, and this was not only the beginning of the end of their relationship, but also the beginning of the end of Juan Carlos as king. He, Corina, her son, and some other people went to Botswana to kill rhinos and the king fell and hurt his hip so he had to be taken back to Spain in order to undergo surgery and afterwards had to apologize in front of the cameras because this was all happening in the middle of a recession so everyone's trying to figure out who he was with and who was Corina in the midst of all of this they found photos of them at public engagements People also found out that he and Juan Sofia were basically separated and that Corina was basically living in the palace. On top of this, there was also a photo of Juan Carlos with one of his friends in front of a dead elephant, which further destroyed the king's public image. The very last incident that eventually led to his abdication happened in January 6, 2014, during his speech at the military Easter event where he was stuttering and mumbling the words that he was reading. It was later revealed that he was basically hanged over because he had spent the entire prior week celebrating his birthday in London with whom he called his real family, aka Corina, her ex-husband and her son, and some other friends of them. And since his flight had been delayed until the early morning of the 6th, he was barely able to sleep. On June 2nd, it was officially announced that Juan Carlos will be abdicating the throne, and the official event took place on June 18th. In 2018, some tapes came out between the king, Corina, and two of their friends. In these audios, Corina accuses Juan Carlos of charging commissions with would amount to 100 million euros for the works of the Mecca Medina high-speed train line, as well as hiding his money in Switzerland. During the conversation, Corina said that the king had used her to buy numerous properties, even behind her back. He apparently also gave her 64 million euros, and once their relationship ended, he told her to transfer her assets to his cousin, but she was afraid that if she did so, she was going to be involved in money laundering, and that's when their relationship ended. This is not the only money-related scandal that Juan Carlos had. He also opened at least two different shell companies in Panama and Switzerland, he and the rest of the family were also accused of using black cards between 2016 and 2018 to pay for personal expenses, and he also had a 10 million euro trust in Jersey Island, all of this in order to not pay taxes. All of these legal issues led to the king leaving Spain in August 2020 and being exiled for two years. His son Felipe, who inherited the throne, also renounced to his inheritance, which came from the shell companies he set up, and said in a speech that the moral obligations of the monarchy are more important than family ties. The king eventually went back to the country on May 19th of 2022 and left once again on the 23rd of the same month. Juan Carlos and Sofia had three children, Elena of Bourbon and Greece, born in 1963, Cristina of Bourbon and Greece, born in 1965, and King Felipe VI. Elena of Bourbon and Greece was born on December 20th, 1963. In 1994, it was announced that she was engaged to Jaime de Marichalar and Sáenz de Tejada, who is the son of a nerve. They had met through a mutual friend, and they ended up getting married on March 18th, 1995. In November 2007, it was announced that the couple was separating, but they said that it wasn't a divorce just yet, and Jaime was allowed to use his royal titles. Still, Elena moved out of their family home into an apartment near it. It was alleged that Elena had said that Jaime had a drug addiction in order to try and ask for an annulment of their Catholic marriage, but both of their lawyers denied this. Whatever it was, it was really bad because on December 15th, 2009, the pair signed their divorce, which was officialized on January 21st, 2018, and the divorce file is supposedly kept in a safe with exceptional security measures. This couple had two kids. Their firstborn was Felipe Juan Froilán de Marichalar and Bourbon, born on July 17th, 1998. He had his first big scandal in April 2012, when he, his father, and his sister were at a family farm when he shot himself. His father had to appear before the civil court because Felipe was under 14 and people under that age cannot carry guns in Spain. But the judge closed the criminal case against Jaime, claiming that there wasn't serious negligence. 
However, he still had a misdemeanor and had to pay a fine estimated at around 150 euros. He was also involved in the scandal that I talked about earlier in 2020, where it was made public knowledge that the family had used black cards to pay for personal expenses. And the most recent scandal happened not too long ago on November 25th, 2022, when he and his friends were involved in an eye fight while leaving a club. The second born was Victoria Federica de Marichalar and Bourbon born on September 9th, 2000. There is not much to say about her, I couldn't find much information regarding her private life, but she has the same reputation as her brother and her mom for having a bad temper and just not being likable and enjoyable to be around. Cristina of Bourbon and Greece was born on June 13th, 1965. In April 1997, rumors about a relationship between Cristina and the handball player Iñaki Urdangarin started to come out. On the 30th, it was announced by the palace that the couple was engaged, and in May, it was announced that they would get married on October 4th. Towards the end of 2011, Iñaki and his business partners were investigated in relation to a corruption case. This happened after the government discovered in 2007 a suspicious imbalance of more than 50 million euros in the account of the newly opened Palma Arena Sports Center. On July 22nd, 2010, the examining magistrate of the Palma Arena case Jose Castro opened a new piece in the case in which he requested information on the agreement signed in 2005 and 2006 between the Illesport Foundation, the Balearic Tourism Institute, and the News Institute, shared at the time by Iñaki. Through a statement, Sarzuela Palace removed Iñaki from his official acts on December 12, 2011. Iñaki's statement with the investigators lasted more than 22 hours during the 25th of February 2012 and early morning of February 27th. He declared that he was unaware of the existence of companies to divert public money and blamed Diego Torres, who is the former vice president of the institute. The newspaper El País found a document of a suspicious budget for an international event that the News Institute organized when Iñaki was in office. It is believed that he persuaded several public administrations to sign agreements with this institute, which was supposed to be a non-profit organization both for work, which was never done, and others with exorbitant budgets of up to 5.8 million euros from public administrations. On December 19, 2012, the anti-corruption prosecutor requested a bond of 8,189,448 euros for Iñaki, his former partner Diego Torres, and the companies managed by both of them. At the beginning of 2013, the royal house deleted from its website the page that corresponded to Iñaki as a member of the royal family and only left his name and image as husband of Cristina on her personal page. As well as ask Iñaki to stop using his royal titles. In May 2014, the tax agency confirmed to Judge Castro that Iñaki defrauded more than 240,000 euros in personal income tax from the years 2007 and 2008. And on February 17, 2017, Iñaki was sentenced to six years and three months in jail and a total fine of 513,553 euros. Iñaki filed an appeal before the Supreme Court and after ratifying his sentence, which was set at five years and ten months in prison, on June 18, 2018, he entered the Brieva prison. Iñaki was granted the third degree prison or open regimen in January 2021. And the penitentiary institution authorized his transfer to Zavala prison once he proved that he had a job offer in Vitoria. On March 1st, 2021, he entered the Alava Provincial Prison to serve the rest of his sentence in an open regime with the obligation to sleep from Monday to Thursday in the prison. On January 2022, it was announced that Cristina and Iñaki had separated and that same day, pictures surfaced of Iñaki with a different woman called Ainoa Armentia, who is his co-worker. Cristina and Iñaki have four kids together. Juan Valentin Urdangarin and Bourbon, born on September 29, 1999. Pablo Nicolás Sebastián Urdangarin and Bourbon, born on December 6, 2000, and who is a handball player like his dad. Miguel Urdangarin and Bourbon, born on April 30, 2002. And Irene Urdangarin and Bourbon, born on June 5, 2005. The last born of King Juan Carlos and Queen Sofia is King Felipe VI born on January 30th, 1968. His first public relationship was with Victoria Carvajal. Victoria's dad actually went to school with King Juan Carlos, and Victoria and Felipe met in school. They had puppy love, they were teenagers, and their relationship ended soon after it started, but they're still friends. His next girlfriend was Isabel Santorius. Their relationship started in 1989 during a dinner with their friends. She was 24 and he was 21. They liked each other a lot, and she seemed perfect for the role. Her parents were rich, they were aristocrats, she wanted to be a diplomat, she spoke multiple languages, she was beautiful, but his family didn't support their relationship due to the fact that her parents were divorced, 
and her mother had a drug problem. Her stepmother, Norda Lindschestein, which is another European royal family, actually called to Sofia and asked her to ask the press in Spain to chill because of the negative way in which they were covering Isabel and how it was affecting her, which they thought was happening because Juan Carlos didn't like her, but to no avail. So Isabel told Felipe to put out an official statement to make their relationship public, but he refused to do so and she broke up with him. They got back together three months later, but it was the same thing. She begged him to make the relationship official and him saying no. Until 1991, when a statement was released saying that the relationship that had never been confirmed had ended. But according to some journalists, they continued to date in private until 1992. It is also alleged that her stepmother, Nora, called Sofia to tell her that they had a problem because Isabel was pregnant. But Sofia told them, no, you have a problem, we don't. Now, this is all rumors, and Isabel ended up marrying Javier Soto, who is the father of her daughter. Much like Victoria, Isabel is still friends or friendly with Felipe, so much so that in 2010, she and his wife, Leticia, were photographed having coffee while their daughters played around. And honestly, I don't think this would have happened if Isabel's daughter was actually Felipe's daughter. In 1995, he dated the model Gigi Howard for a few months while he was visiting the USA. Nothing serious, just fun. His next girlfriend was Eva Sanum. They met in 1997 during a dinner in Oslo. Their relationship became public in 2001 when they both attended the wedding of the Norwegian prince. Their relationship ended in December of that year with Felipe talking to some journalists in Madrid. Apparently, the palace tried to get her to end their relationship publicly, but she refused to do so because they never confirmed their relationship and she thought that she would look silly ending a relationship that never had an official beginning to the public. In 2002, he had a short relationship with Gwyneth Pathro, but that didn't last. And finally, in 2003, he announced that he was dating Leticia Ortiz Rocasolan. Let's talk about Leticia on her own. Leticia was born on September 15, 1972. She is the daughter of the journalist Jesus Jose Ortiz Alvarez and his wife Maria Palona Rocasolano Rodriguez. After finishing high school, she enrolled at the University of Madrid, where she graduated in Information Sciences branch of journalism. While in college, she began to collaborate with the ABC newspaper and the EFA agency. Later, between 1992 and 1993, she did an internship at the newspaper La Nueva España, working in the areas of economics, television, and entertainment. She then got a master's degree in audiovisual information and traveled to Guadalajara, Mexico to begin her doctoral studies, which she did not finish. She worked for CNA, Bloomberg TV, Verano, and Telediario, which are Spanish media. In 2000, she received the Mariano José de Larra Award granted by the Madrid Press Association for her work as best journalist under 30. On August 7, 1997, Leticia married Alonso Guerrero Pérez after a 10-year-long relationship, but they ended up getting a divorce in 1999. She remained single until October 2002 when she met Felipe. The official story is that they met at a dinner where they were introduced to each other by a friend that they had in common after Felipe had asked him to introduce them. However, her cousin says that they met at a bar and started a sexual relationship. We will talk more about that cousin, but yeah, they started dating and she really wanted to keep it a secret. She didn't tell anyone, not her friends or her family. He did tell his family who were not happy about them dating. They thought that she was too old and too experienced. Basically, they didn't think that they would be able to control her. On top of that, she also had been previously married and she was just, she was a grown ass woman with her own life outside of Felipe. Like I said, they feared that they wouldn't be able to control her like they could someone who was younger and less experienced. But Felipe didn't care and he told his parents that if they didn't let him marry her, he would give up the throne. And thus, on November 1st, 2003, it was officially announced that Leticia and Felipe were engaged. Their wedding took place on May 22nd, 2004. In 2007, Leticia suffered a big shake to her personal life when her sister Erica passed away. It was rumored that she had actually ended her life due to the pressure of the press since the reveal of the relationship between Leticia and Felipe. It was alleged that Erika's ex and father of her daughter had a breakdown and told King Juan Carlos that they had killed Erika, and Leticia kneeled in front of him asking him for forgiveness. After everything happened, Leticia tried to get custody of her niece, Erika's six-year-old daughter, but she was unsuccessful. In April 2013, Leticia's cousin, David Rocasolano, published a book called Goodbye Princess, in which besides telling us the funeral story, he also says that in 2002, before the engagement was announced, Leticia asked him with the support of Felipe to destroy the clinical record that proved that she had had an abortion. In the book, he shows a photo of the document that he had supposedly destroyed. David claims that the father was David Tejeda, but he has denied this. 
Regardless, Felipe knew about this abortion and supported her decision to destroy the evidence or else they really wouldn't be able to marry because abortion is against the Catholic faith. In June 2014, Felipe was officially named King of Spain and Leticia Queen Consort of Spain. There has been a lot of drama between Leticia and her mother-in-law and her sisters-in-law. With her sisters-in-law, she apparently never had a good relationship, but they got along well enough. Still, the relationship got worse after all of the scandals with Iñaki. Apparently, Cristina and her mom were asking Felipe to pardon him, but Leticia always told him not to associate with him. Now, if we think logically, I doubt that Leticia alone would have been able to convince him. I'm pretty sure that anyone who cared to keep the monarchy in place was begging Felipe not to pardon his brother-in-law because that would have been a bad blow for an already unpopular royal family. When it comes to Sofia, it's the same. Sofia and Juan Carlos did not like Leticia, like I mentioned earlier, and tried to convince Felipe to break up with her. But it didn't work, so they had to get along. However, in April 2018, they let this distaste for each other be known to the public or at least Leticia did. There is this very uncomfortable video of Leticia, Felipe, their daughters, Sofia, and Juan Carlos leaving an Easter service. While they were leaving, Sofia was trying to get a photo with her granddaughters, but Leticia was in the way, literally in the way, and refusing to move. It was so awkward that even Felipe and Juan Carlos had to tell her to move. When she eventually did, Sofia kissed one of the girls on the forehead and Leticia wiped the kiss. She then, as a public apology, had to open a car door for Sofia in front of everyone, which I'm pretty sure was very embarrassing for her, because by that point, she was Queen of Spain. There has also been rumors of tension between Felipe and Leticia, and they have had some tense moments in public. Maybe they just went through a rough patch on their marriage. After all, most of these tense moments happened between 2016 to 2018. Lastly, Felipe and Leticia have two daughters, Leonor of Bourbon, born on October 31st, 2005, and future Queen of Spain, and Sofia of Bourbon, born on April 29th, 2007. There isn't much to say about either of them because they're now just very recently starting their public lives, giving speeches and whatnot, but Leonor has been rumored to be dating the Spanish football player Gabi. Anyways, that was all for today's video. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the messy, messy, messy and corrupt Spanish royal family. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!